can't really do anything about the lights in this room. I think it is light enough for me to work. Uh, that is supposed to be a 200 watt bulb, but I, as it, as it guess, uh, that is no brighter than 125 watt. Really disappointed the fact I've paid three pound each for regular old style uh, service bulbs, the old Bainic type. Pay three quid each for them. They're not even long life. So a bit disappointed in them. But anyway, got to work with it. So this strat, uh, the bits have arrived. I ordered them yesterday. Where are we? I've got a big bag of uh, Oak Grigsby five-way switches there. One of them in. I've got some jacks delivered as well. So I've got the bits for this. So what I'm going to do is, gonna, uh, I'm going to leave a wide angle on there. I'm going to just whip these strings straight off. I'm not even going to... Normally I save old strings to use in mock setups or... You know, if I'm doing a setup, I just want to set up with some old strings just to test something out. But these, they're old, they grub out, they're just going straight in the bin. Um, guitar is quite dirty, quite dusty. That one's not coming out. That one's not coming out. This guitar's been stood a while because they're not coming out of there. I'm going to have to work faff about. Let me just move the camera. You may as well see everything. You can see why I have to pull up weeds sometimes. Not brown complaining. This job's fantastic. But here you go, let's just zoom in a little there. Is that good enough for you guys? Now uh, we'll just get these strings off. Unless someone's wrapped them round. Yeah, oh gosh, I hate that. We just wrap, these have been wrapped round and wrapped through, looped through. You should never ever loop your strings round and through on these because they are a bastard to get out. I mean, what a P-I-T-A. I'm not even going to edit that language out. Why would you do that? That seems really awkward. This one's wrapped round. You don't have to wrap strings round. If you string guitars properly, you don't have to faff about with this. This is actually wrapped round and looped back through. So it's double wound. I mean, that's great, because if I slip with this, I'm going to ding a hole in the guitar. So thank you very much for that. Come on, load of shite. It snapped anyway, there you go. String guitars properly. Again, this is wrapped round up, I can't get that string off. I am basically cursing in my mind right now. What absolute crap. Why would you double that round? If you can't string a guitar properly, don't string it. Look, it's wrapped round up, double. So you've got two loops going on. That really makes my job difficult. Not happy about this. I'm going to turn the camera off, calm myself down, and uh, get these strings off. I've had to go in there with cutters to remove little bits of crap like this. I don't even know if you, know, if you can see it. Because they've been wrapped around the pole, they've been wrapped around the pole the opposite way and threaded through. So you've had it threaded through the post twice. I'm not going to say any more about it. Also stuck in the saddles or through the travel -o. I understand that some people store guitars for a long time and they don't touch them and things seize. There was no need for double wrap strings anywhere, ever. The end. So oh yeah, these are all strings are trapped inside there, so I'm going to have to go in, try and free them. I mean, okay, it's an old, very old Japanese guitar that's been stood a long time, I get that. out at least we're nice to free the strings you know we get old guitars we get stuff that's been for a long time I get that I do get it I'm not really much complaining about these being stuck that does happen so we have the strings off Praise be. I'm going to bin this rubbish. There's no need for strings to be double wrapped on any guitar ever. 
That's just laziness, that is. Or just stupid. Maybe you don't know, maybe you don't. It's not lazy, it's more stupid than anything. Why do that? Why make things difficult? So anyway, I'm going to wrap these up best I can. Could be worse, I could not be furloughed on full pay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So there's the strings more or less on this one. Huh? So the strings are off, which is great news. Uh, I will be putting the strings on correctly when I'll be stringing it. I am a big believer and a big fan of wraps round posts. I wrap strings accordingly and I get some good wraps around there. In fact, I don't even cut the top E string in, in many cases. Uh, I use all of what is on there, just get it wrapped around the post. That's my way of doing things. I do like to see wraps around posts, so maybe I'm just being a little bit pedantic, a little bit picky. So there we go, the strings are off. Just put the screwdriver away. Uh, like I say, the bits have arrived, my oak grisby, and uh, a new jack there. I may just be able to clean the old jack up, may not need a new one on there. Also need to replace the volume knob. Uh, I did look in my floor drawer, see if it was one the same colour, and um, I don't actually have a volume knob. But yeah, I used to have loads of, I've got loads of all colours, but not the colour I want. Now I do happen to have volume tone tone there in cream, which I could stick on there. Those are the only ones I have. Do I have, there's a tone, there's a tone, there's a tone. I mean, would you believe it? Everyone I've got is a tone and I need a volume. That's classic. So, uh, I'll stick those cream ones on. Yeah, that's the best bet. They can have those for nothing. So we are going to go with those. At least they are the same colour. Um, what I am going to do though, in the meantime, is we're going to check these frets. I'm going to do it on camera. I do apologise if you see my socks. I'm not wearing any shoes today. It's a Saturday. I'm at home. I'm not going anywhere. Well, I am actually going over to Leicestershire Lumpia in Shepshed later in the day to see my friend Anna. A couple of things to talk about over there. And um, Danny Lynn, by the way, Lester Shalufia, took over from, uh, he was, um, dare I say, apprentice? Nigel Roberts's protege, apprentice, for the last however many years, 10, 11 years, and I take over the business from Nigel, who has retired. Nigel being probably the best Luthier I know, great guy. And Danny has taken over, he's now running Leicester Shalufia fully. He's actually moved premises, he's moved out of uh, Nigel's, um, well basically it was a converted shed, but, but not a shed as you, I mean a proper walled unit he had. Uh, but Danny's now got his own place just a little bit down the road, I'll give you the address in a minute. Um, Danny takes care of many guitars uh, in the Leicestershire area and all over the country. And he is at 27A Derby Road, Haven, Leicestershire, LE12 5LD. I know that because he's just sent me a text, because I'm nipping over it a bit. Wait a second, what's that? Um, that is brilliant. We do compare notes. We get together now and again. We eat, we dine together. Uh, him and his wife, me and my wife. Danny and I, myself, we've got more than one thing in common. We're both avid football fans, him being Leicester City, me being Leeds United. Danny plays football to a good level, or did play football to a good level until he got injured. Uh, I played uh, football at a uh, just an amateur level, uh, but love football. Uh, we are both guitar men, and we both we are both married to girls from Canada. Um, I met my wife in two thousand and eight. I think he met Natalie a little bit after two thousand and eight. Uh, they were married, I believe, in 2017, was it? Uh, me and my Michelle were married in 2012. So we have quite a few things in common. So we get together and we have a good time. Um, but anyway, back to the guitar. I've just babbled on there, haven't I? Should I stop this and refilm it? No, absolutely not. I'm just going to carry on. So, checking that my neck is straight. And it is... There's an, yeah, there's an oomph of relief here, but there's an oomph of back bow there, so that is as straight as we're going to get it. Quite happy with that. I'm going to take my fret rocker from GMI in Greece. I love GMI tools. I'm going to grab a permanent marker. And we're just going to 
check the frets. I did notice there were a few quite high spots on some. The, this needs a refret. There are some gouges. They are weedy frets, about two mil, probably 2.3 at max. That one's a little bit high. I would recommend a refret on this somewhere down the line, but there's not that much weird that we can't do anything with them and make the guitar just playable. I don't think it has many high frets. I've said if we can get down to about, keep it down to about five, I'll just do, I'll spot level one, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Just check in. Old Squire, you see, made in Japan, this should have really level frets. Because they knew what they were doing back in the day. Not like today, everything's all mass manufactured and uh, it's very rare I get a new guitar in that doesn't have uneven frets. Very rare. But this is surprisingly very good. So far, two frets need attention. Frets down this end are fine. You probably get away with half a refret on this. I'm sure I've got wire to match. I'm very, very impressed. We just need attention to two frets. One, two, that is it. I need to recrown these three at this end, just ever so slightly. So we're going with an intensive setup. We're going to replace the five way. Probably. The jack. No one there, I thought there might be. So we've got three frets. Place a five-way, place a jack. This one will probably have. It may have an import switch in there. I don't know. I've not looked yet, but we're going to be putting a, an American type oak group to be in there. They're very same to same, uh, very similar to the CRL. They're all the same gear. Um, so intensive setup, some electrical work. You're going to be looking at uh, 105 quid plus the parts, 15 quid for parts, 120 quid. Job done with this guitar. Um, I'll have you a number of please, with that. I've already let them know how much it's going to cost. I'll be setting the tremolo as well. I won't be charging extra for the tremolo. Uh, but that is it. Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to crack on. We're going to, um, I'm going to remove the scratch plate. I'm going to have a look inside, look at the electrics. Um, and we're going to start replacing things. Okay, I've dismantled the guitar. Uh, we have the pit guard flipped over. I've only just flipped it over, we've not scratched anything, we will not scratch anything, but just anyway, we are going to place a cloth in there. So we are going to remove the five way. We're not going to use any desoldering anything, we're just going to get a nice hot iron on there somehow. I hope it's hot, there you go. Should be hot, 380 degrees Celsius. Crappy little wires these are. So it's an import type switch on these uh, old Japanese squires. Put in a oak grooveby in there, which um, you get on the American models. So let me just uh, remove this. screws will fit in the grease bit because normally they have long screws on there. No, not the short ones on this would be fine. I've not looked at a wiring diagram. Something else I'm going to be doing by the way with this guitar is the, the uh, bridge pickup is not in the tone circuit. We are going to add it to the tone circuit. So we are going to shear the middle tone um, on the treble pickup or the bridge pickup. So that all, all that entails is just adding in a little jumper wire. This has decided to be awkward, of course it has. Let's go with a uh, screwdriver. Just get this going. 
So I need to look at a diagram to find out how we wire. I no, more or less know how to wire these things, but I'm just going to refresh my memory. Could have done much better with this switch, uh, quality switch. They're about, you know, for about 10 quid. I think I paid 10 quid for these. I'm charging for it anyway. I'll buy in bulk. Well, I bought four. There you go. Unfortunately, the switch tip that came on the original switch does not fit, so I've had to add one of my own on there. But that's in. Uh, I'm going to find out where to wire these when I've separated them. I mean, it's a little bit untidy around here anyway. Um, I'll get that sorted out. We'll get this wired up right. Uh, I'll, like I say, I'll add the bridge pickup into the tone circuit as well. Just a little jump of wire, that is. Once that's done, we can bang that back in and we can look at swapping the uh, jack. Very simple, not difficult to do. I've removed the old style import five-way switch, which was causing problems. We've replaced with an Oak Grigsby, um, which is the American type five-way. Uh, much, much better, much more solid and much more professional looking. I've managed to, the first, oddly, I have a lot of diagrams down here. The first diagram I came to was the one I wanted. And this has a Delta Tone mod on there, which basically you create a jumper from the middle to the bridge pickup and it brings the bridge pickup into the tone or into the second tone. So where we have normally master volume, neck tone, middle tone, we now have master volume, neck tone, middle and bridge tone. So these two, that's a tone knob for these two, that's a tone knob for this one, and that's a volume for all three. A normal five way in position one, bridge in position two, bridge middle in position three, middle, position four, middle, neck, position five, neck. So we have a normal configuration on there. I'm going to wipe all the crap and smeg off of these areas. Don't like they've ever been cleaned, which they wouldn't have been. We've still got the plastic under there originally. And just to be on the safe side, we're going to get some service or switch cleaner sprayed inside the pots just in case they are crackling. I didn't check to see if it worked because I've not had this guitar plugged in, but won't hurt to get some switch cleaner in there anyway. And if they do crackle, uh, they're not going to crackle anymore. Odd thing about this, it does have a large pot um, for the volume and two small pots for the tones. Um, I can't see a name on the pots. I cannot see a name on there, so we don't know what name they are. Not that it's important. But anyway, that should all work fine. Like I said, we're going to get some switch cleaner in there. That's I could do it now on camera, can't I? And we can work that in. And if there are any crackly pots, this should alleviate that problem. Won't hurt to get some in there anyway. So we're going to go in the volume. First tone. Second tone. Plenty in there. And all we're going to do is turn it over and just wiggle. Give them a bit of a wiggle. And if they were crackling, they won't be now. All I've got to do now is I've got to, I'm going to replace the um, input jack. Only the jack itself, not the actual socket. Uh, I'm going to get some, I'm going to get a cloth on there. I've got one prepared, ready to go in the washing machine, so I can use this one. Clearing up any smeg and crap around these areas, which is great. So pretty much done. Just got to change the input jack, like I said. Then I'll test the electrics, and once that's done, when well, I'm happy with it, I'm going to wipe all the guitar under the plate where there's all the grime I've got in over the years, and we're going to put it back together, put it aside, and we're going to go to work on the neck and frets. So all going well. So while we're here, we may as well test the electrics. Um, as I've got everything already set up. So I've just checked, the uh, second tone is scratching like a uh, like a professional scratcher, but let's just check the neck pickup. Volume. So. Working fine, let's check the middle. Off, off. Scratching though. Just a little bit. 
a bit more switch clear in there, we'll be fine. Neck, uh, bridge, sorry. So we have everything working correctly. Just need to get a little bit more switch cleaner in this one. And we're going to get another squirt and get it all worked in. Uh, it will clean up, trust me. I know what I'm doing. And let's just flip over, like so. A bit more switch cleaner in there. Very old pot. Plenty in there. A little bit, another squirt in that one, just for good measure. And there. Can't overdo it. I'm just going to work it in on this far one, upside down. I've also ran some solder over the old joints where they meet the pots because some were working a little bit loose, so that should make everything a little better, a little bit tighter, a little bit better, just give us better connections everywhere. So let's try again. Not scratching anymore. Right on the middle. Volume. So let's check positions two and four, which we've not checked yet. Bridge. Middle. Tone. Middle only. Neck and middle. Working, we have no scratchy parts anymore, and we have tone on the bridge shared with the middle. So that's the electrics done, bar the input jack. I'm going to swap that over off camera in a moment or two. Very happy with how that's gone. I'm going to wipe everything over, give it all a clean. This all needs cleaning underneath, we'll blow any crap out of there as well. Uh, leave that with me and uh, I'll get that done, get the scratch plate back on and uh, we'll move on to the neck. A little bit of spot levelling now. Um, only three areas that have high frets. And they're not that high. What we're going to do is I'm just going to tap gently. each area my fretting hammer I'm just going to check again because something may have just become a little bit unseated and that one very high on the very edge right there is not too bad there on the edge and a very very tiny bit on there so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to skim across now you will see there is some quite deep pitting here, so we are going to recrown the frets at this end. Now normally I take this all up, but I should be able to do it just with the crowning file and with my flat file. This is a number four cut file, very very smooth but very sharp, made by Valorbe in Switzerland. It's Gardon and Valorbe or Valorbe. A little fish icon on there. It's perfectly flat on this side, um, so I like to use this one just to do any leveling. Now keeping it even so I don't cut into the fingerboard. You've got to be quite steady to do this. Then you follow a radius and you'll get used to knowing where a radius is. 
but you see little pit marks in there and we're going to leave those but we are going to ever so slightly crown so the guitar will still play fine I need a cloth there we go I myself would refret it but it doesn't want to go that route yet some of these are quite deep but it's still playable you know I can understand why you want to have a refret yet if you don't need to have one something we can look at later definitely as long as we get as much out of it as you can if these frets are the originals and it's quite an old guitar I don't know I've not checked any date sites or anything with the serial number. Serial number is Q030703. So they are level. We are just going to go with a diamond crowning file. This was a gift from Nigel Roberts, formerly the owner and certainly the creator of Leicestershire Luthier. Uh, now that is under the reins over to who was his apprentice and his protege, uh, Danny Lint. And him and his wife Natalie are now owners of Leicester Shalithia. I'm coincidentally I'm going to go and see Danny in uh, I'm gonna leave in about 20 minutes. I'm driving down there and going to look at his new workshop. I've already seen it, I saw it before it opened. But I'm gonna go and see him now it's open. I'm taking a guitar down there, 1973 Custom Les Paul. So I'm just recrowning some of these frets, and basically it's because we've got divots in them. I'm just gonna shape them ever so slightly. We're not cutting any height off the top of them. We're just reprofiling, really easy with this file. Like I say, it's a diamond file. The reason I'm not going to tape to not tape up is the frets are high enough for me not to actually dig the edges of the, file, of the fret file into the frets. I suppose I normally force myself to clean the file every fret, but every couple is not going to be too bad. So I always overlap and go back one as well. And these are looking nicer already. That is as much as I'm going to have to do. And these, those divots, even though the divots are still there on the top centre, we're not really on the edges because we've slightly reprofiled. Not major work, but all the, all the, I mean, still needs doing. Nonetheless was the word I was looking for. The reason I've got my Stream Z file out is I'm going to take that for Danny to have a look at because he's never used one. And I say it's just an amazing piece of kit. Though it doesn't profile like these do, it will not cut the top of a fret so it gets you. It will re recrown for you but it won't touch the top of a fret which is what you want. You don't want some touching. So I'm going to take that to let Danny have a go on it. I'm taking that down anyway just to show him the files I use because we do compare notes Danny and myself. So that is those frets slightly recrowned. And we're just going to check that we've got a consistent height over them. But we've got no rocket anywhere now. We might as well check the whole board while I'm here. We could have gone with half a refret on this. These have divots right up till. Well, all the way up here, but you could have done a half refret. Saying that, why do things by half measures? Once, if I'm doing a refret, I want to do a full refret. I don't get people doing a half refret because you see, I use a different wire nowadays. I use 25% nickel silver, which is much harder than this stuff. This stuff will be 12% nickel silver. And in recent years, I've been using 18%, but for the last year and a half, I've been using 25%, which is the hardest nickel silver fret wire on the planet. And you don't want to be mixing different grades of fret wire, in my opinion. 
It wants half refretching, get it refretted. I've actually done a couple of half refrets recently, and I don't mind doing them. It's just pay the extra. It's only 100 quid difference and get a full one done. There you go. So those frets are level, so they're fine. So I am going to slightly polish, so I'm not giving them a full seven paper polish. I'm just going to give them a decent polish, half decent polish with uh, some steel wool. And uh, once that's done, we can get the neck back on the guitar and uh, look at the setup, look at cutting the nut. The frets have been done as well as they can be done. Still a little bit, some of the um, grooves in there from the wear. Like I say, really need to refret, but it will still be playable. And I'm polishing these frets up, and we're no need to go gung ho about it. Just going with some super fine or extra fine steel wool over the top. In at the far side, in at the near side, back over the top. I've already worked these two, so I've got the rest of them to do. Once I've done this, I'll be going over with a super fine fret rubber, uh, which is the same as going some uh, some micro fine mesh, pretty much a similar thing. And uh, they are coming up an absolute treat. I've already gone and done the bevels. Uh, so I'm just finishing over the top and any little scratches I've got on the edge of where the bevels are will be taken out by going this way. So nothing uh, too strenuous, nothing too difficult. Just work these. And uh, once this is done, I'm going to put the neck back on the guitar. We'll stick some strings on. The owner of the guitar has already supplied some strings, a set of um, a set of Diaderio 942s. We'll stick them on, we'll look at the nut slots, see if they need any uh, cutting. We'll get the guitar, guitar set up and it will be ready to go. Nice easy one this one. It's not really often we get easy ones. So I'm going to crack on, get these done. Uh, I'll bring you back in once we've started setting the thing up. Finally, we are at the setup stage. I'm going to explain a little of how we set a Stratocaster up. It's slightly different to all the guitars in as much as we do have a tremolo system. And what we're going to do is, the guy does use a tremolo, so what we're going to do is we're going to balance this tremolo just off the body. Uh, so slightly, slightly raised. Now what we do is, first we set the two outside screws and we loosen them to the height we want the tremolo to be. And the four middle screws, we actually um, turn back another quarter turn after we've set the two outside ones because we're only using the two outside ones pretty much like a fulcrum tremolo. We don't use the four in the middle for stabilising. Uh, they're just for extra strength in there in case any, anything slips. So the four middle ones are slightly raised, so the tremolo is just on the outer two screws. Uh, that maintains the height. What we do then is I, in this case, stick a business card or two underneath. These are two paper business cards, my own business cards, and they hold the tremolo level. What I then do is, we'll tighten the claw screw so the springs are tighter, so the tremolo cannot move. Even if I snapped snap a string, the tremolo would not move, everything else would stay in tune. And this is how we're going to set the tremolo. So what we want to do first is we want to set the height above the 12th fret, which I've already done. 1.75 mil this side, 1.5 mil this side. That's the distance between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. So I'm happy with that. Other things I want to be looking at is intonation. That is, when I pluck a harmonic at the 12th fret, it needs to be in tune with the open string or a, a noted 12th fret note. Um, so we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to turn the tuner on. Quite a few things we've got to do yet. We've got to set the radius, <clears throat> which I've not checked yet. I don't even know what radius it is on this. Let's go with a nine and a half because that seems that's pretty standard. <clears throat> Just to see if we are there. Radius gauge under the strings. Let's get in the right place. No, we are not. We are a seven and a quarter gauge, I believe. Because that is a lot tighter. <coughs> seven and a quarter inch radius. We're still going to set the radius at the bridge at nine and a half because it's what you do, even on a seven and a quarter. So <coughs> once we've got the two outside one set, we can go to the middle. I'm going to do that first. Just going to check here and here. I do know already we are at the height I want it with 12 foot on the base side. We're just slightly over 1.75, that will do. And we're 1.5 on the treble side. So I'm happy with that anyway. 
I'm going to get an on and off and just check the radius, check the radius at the uh, itself. Again, the radius gauge underneath. We're looking for all the strings to be resting on top of the gauge, and I can just tell by looking at this that we're nowhere near. We're going to raise the four middle ones. We're going to loosen the strings to do that. We will do the intonation once I have got the radius on the bridge done. Right, I'm going to need some other keys. I'll go with one and a half mil. I think it should be about right. Should be metric. There you go, we'll do one and a half mil. So I'm going to come higher on the four middle ones. We know the two outside ones are fine. Now I'm going to show the full setup, this being the six screw type tremolo. It's all about getting this base plate where you want it. Once it's where you want that, then you get on with everything else. So we'll come to setting the tune correctly on the springs at the back once we've got everything else done. We've also got to look at the nut slots. <coughs> Check the height of the strings above the first fret, but you know, <coughs> first things first. To coin a P2K go. Now let's do first things third, shall we? Exactly. Right, okay. <clears throat> Doing these up just a little bit more. A bit of that one and that one was still a little bit low. <clears throat> the good thing about having this LED up there is I can see the shadow of the strings on top of this gauge. You can't where you are, that's just unfortunate and unlucky. Um, but there you go, that's looking pretty good there. So everything is higher than it needs to be. So I'm going to drop each string onto the radius gauge. We'll set all the tuners level in due course. And that's pretty good where it is. So I'm just dropping each string onto the top of the radius gauge. That looks pretty good. And if we're a bit skew with here, like that was low down there, that was quite high, I'm going to turn this one up. I'm going to go a quarter turn, drop this one down a quarter turn. Let's bring that pretty level. Same with this one. If you need these pretty level, not in an arc. Eighth of a turn there. For the turn there, and there you go. See how it's going. That one's pretty level. This needs to come up a tad there, down a tad here. This one needs to just come up a tad there, and that to me looks pretty good. So we should now have the radius correct at the bridge. Yep, and that's beautiful. Well, happy with that. So we now have a radius set. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the intonation. So first we're going to bring it to pitch. Now I do know pitch laying down is ever so slightly different from pitch in playing position, but we'll uh, sort that out a little bit later. It's all about getting the intonation right at the moment. Okay, now the intonation, set it to 12 fret obviously. If you don't know the intonation is done at 12 fret, you need to come read up about intonation. Now it's a little bit sharp, it means we need to just lengthen the length on that. Uh, just basically, we're going to move the saddle further away from the 12 fret. I remember it this way, if we do have a sharp note at the 12th fret, we need to move the saddle to the right. If we have a flat note, we need to move it to the left. And where I remember it is sharp, right, five letters, flat and left are four letters. So you're always going to know if it's, you'll know which way to go. If it's flat there, you go to the left, 
If you're sharp, you go to the right with the saddle. So let's try again. Beautiful. Nice. A little bit sharp. Little adjustment there. Hot on the A. as much as he will go. And there you go, we have the intonation done, so we're just going to check the radius again. So the intonation is set, radius is set, that is beautiful. So we've got the tremolo set level, we've got the radius set, we've got the intonation set. Um, something I've not checked is uh, the relief in the neck. I'll be looking at 0.25 millimetres, round about the 6th fret, between 6th and 7th frets. Should be pretty much bang on because uh, setting the neck straight before you put it on, then tuning up normally brings it to about that amount of relief. And I did have the neck dead straight when I put it back on, so let's have a look. So I'm thinking that the relief will be perfect. It looks pretty good anyway. 0.25 six frets fine so that is perfect happy with that so we have the relief set we have the action at the 12 fret we have the intonation done and we have the saddles done only one more thing to do and that is to check the gaps between the strings and the first fret and again I'll be looking at a measurement of about 0.3 millimeters this side to about 0.2 millimeters that side you can go a lot lower you can get down to about 0.1 if you want, but I think 0.3 is a safe average on the bass. 0.2 is a safe average on the treble. It will hold tune when you uh, bar a F or an F sharp or a G chord. Any higher than that, you're going to start getting sharper notes in these areas because you're bending the string a bit more. So they are my measurements. I don't know if they're definitive or what, no, but that's really high. That's good. Yeah, he's good. The middle two, I'll be looking at 0.25. So let's get that feeler gauge out there. These measurements are in millimetres, by the way. I can come a little bit lower. I can come a little bit lower. Then these two, round about 0.2. I will gradient them down. So 
0 0.225, 0 0.225, 0 0.225, 0.225, 0.21, 0.2, or around those measurements. Not spot onto those, but you get what I'm saying. We'll just graduate it down a little. You know what I mean. You know what to do. Right, so 0.2. They are just about ringing, can still do a little bit more, so we are going to get the nut slot files out. I'm just going to put the tools away that I've used, I don't need any more. So you're basically seeing a full setup on this section of the video. I'm not going to stop the camera, I'm just going to crack on right through. I have a 942 set of Deodario strings on there, so I'm going to need the correct files for those. I'll get as close as I can. I know, for instance, we don't have a uh, we do have a nine. Do we have a nine? No, we don't have a nine, so we'll go over ten. We don't have a fifteen, so we'll go with sixteen. Uh, we don't have an eleven, so we'll go with a thirteen. All standard fair. Um, and then we'll, where's a 30 go? So we've got a 10, a 13, and a 16 for a 9, 11, 15. Then we're going to be going 42, 32, 24. I do have a 24. I do have a 42. And I do have a 32. These are files by Hosco. Great set. The best ones I've used, I've used them all, uh, except the Stumat ones. These by Hosco are by far the best. They were £125 for a set of 11. I'll just show you the gubbins that they come in. Hosco, Japanese. So, nut slots <coughs> with the guitar to pitch and everything else set. We can now set the height of these nut slots. So, not a difficult job. Tools out of the way. We don't need stuff in the way that we don't need anymore. Uh, one thing I learned early doors was to uh, get your tools out of the way. Never lift tools over an instrument just in case you drop something. Anyway, that's another story for another time. I'm going to need a rag just to clean the files. I'll put down here. So, 42, the first one. 0 0.042 inches. Let us grab a feeler gauge. One 0.3. Measure twice cut ones. Quite a bit of height there. We're going to take the file in this in the groove and just nice short strokes. Slightly angle it down toward the tuner, not too much, just a little. It will cut a perfect U shape, these files. They're really, really brilliant. And just keep checking. high, give it a wipe, and again, nice and gentle, take your time, don't go too deep, go too deep, you're placing the knot, that's going to take time and money. It's starting to rattle, that's nice. Should be enough. A tiny bit more. right there perfect next one just starting to boil we'll wipe this file and put it away 
you will learn in this game that uh, putting your tools away after each use is the right thing to do all of the time. Once you've finished with it, get it out of the way. Okay, next one. 0 0.032. <coughs> Check the height again. This is very close to where it needs to be. Almost rattling. Well, just starting to rattle. So we're just going to get this thing out of the way if we can. Try and pop it in the next one along if you can. If not, you want to loosen it and pull it out of the way. Quite there yet. I'm going to actually hold it out of the way. That's fine. Beautiful. Next one, 0.25. See how it's more rattling on that one than this one, because that's because I've took that one just that little bit lower. So I'm just going to crack on, get this done now. Clean the file. Looks like you blow the right side. Clean the file, put it away, next one out. Don't have a 22, so, well it's not 22 anyway, I do believe it's a 24, so we're going with the 24. So we check this one with 0.25. That is rattling just about, we need to move hardly anything here. All I'm gonna do with this is just flare it and just angle it back slightly. I guarantee that will be spot on. Rattling a little, but not quite enough yet. Why don't we just let this file a little bit more blunt? Perfect. Next one, which will be a 15, we're going to go in with a 16 file. This one's very close to where it needs to be. So you get the idea, really easy. He's out of the way. 16. Not it's just cracked there. Never mind, it's still functioning, so we'll leave it as is. I could fill that with some uh, bicarb and super glue and shape it, but I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fine. Obviously an old knot. But it doesn't affect the slot at all. That's that one done. I will build that up with some dust, sort of some bone dust or something, and recarve that just to make it look the part. But it's not going to cause a problem anyway. But here you go, next one. No point in these two don't really need touching, but I'm going to just take them down that little bit. Thirteen on the eleven. Point 
zero one three. Needs oddly anything moving this one. Just going to get the grime out of there and make sure it is wide enough. Like I say, don't go gung ho. If you're not getting results, it doesn't matter. Just keep going back, taking a little at uh, a time. You don't want to go too deep. That one's fine now, and this one with the 10. Shame about that not cracking as it did, but it's not affecting the. Um, slot i am going to build that up i'm not going to show that on camera really easy i'm going to loosen the strings get some tape around the edge drop some bicarb or some bone dust in there some super glue build it back up recarve it recarve the slot you won't even know it's been touched Perfect, so that is the nut slots all carved to the right depth. Set up just about done. I need to stretch the strings in and come back and set the tremolo. Once that's done, we will be finished. So I've decided to fill in this area of the nut. And I've just gone in with some bone dust I have collected over the years. And we're just going to basically fill it in and recarve the nut. I don't need that much. But it's just a matter of get some bone dust over that place. And that looks pretty good. The super glue has taken, doesn't take long to set, to scrape off the main excess, and I can then come in with a file with a safe edge, reshape the knot, and recut that one slot. We didn't have a problem with the slot, we had a problem with the bone not chipping as I was cutting the slot. This is a bit of a down, but you know. So I'm going to take my number four cut Swiss file. Great piece of kit, it has a safe edge there, which will not cut anything. And we're just going to shape the sides. And again, this side, shape the sides. And then we're just going to go over the top. And there you go, and you can tell that it's been slightly worked, but it's better than having a gap there, isn't it? So remove the tape, and that is as good as new. Bar, I've got to recut the slot. Slot being a 15, we need a 16 file. which we have right here. And that looks fine. Just get a little bit on that edge. It's got away from me there. I need to just knock that out. Let's try a little 
pointy stick there. And that looks pretty good to me. Again, safe edge down. I think unless I pointed that out, you're not going to know about that. Some 400 grit just to go over the top. That is a good job all round. So I again will check that slot. I have it off camera now. I'm going to bring the guitar back up to pitch, get the strings back on. I'll recut that slot again. All the rest should be fine. You've just seen me cut them not five minutes ago. That one I need to cut again, and there you go. So, leave that with me, I'll get that done. And the good thing is, we've filled that where the nut cracked. We do have the guitar all finished, barring the tremolo. And what we need to do to set the tremolo is we remove the business cards from underneath. Now, unfortunately, I was not given a tremolo arm with this, so I'm going to have to use something slightly different. I'm going to use a screwdriver. I'm going to remove the business cards, and what's going to happen is the tremolo is going to pull back because of the tension of the springs being higher than the tension of the strings. So everything will now be sharp, but it is sharp. And what we're gonna do is to rectify that is, we're gonna set the tuning by altering the springs at the back, and we're gonna loosen them. And we're gonna loosen them until the A string drops in, into tune. And we're just gonna keep checking and it's still sharp, and I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm hoping you can see on the camera, but I'm just going to keep loosening these claw screws at the back, and it's going to loosen the tension of the springs. And once we get the A string in tune, all the others should fall into place. So we just undo the screws, same amount each side, keeping the claw in line. And once we get to the position we need to be, the tremolo will be semi-floating. It will be floating just a little. We are still sharp. Okay, you set a Floyd Rose up pretty much the same way. You have it all blocked off until you get to it, and there you go. Well, a little bit flat in some positions, so we're just going to very slightly tighten these screws again, and that should be should be where we want to be right now. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep. We are in tune. And that is it, that is how easy it is. Now, if I can just show you, I'm going to remove the jack. The bridge is now floating just, I've got to be careful where I put the guitar because the neck is going to hit my amp. That the bridge is now just floating, it's just off the body. It's perfectly horizontal with the body of the guitar, but it is not sat back on the wood. So we have a floating tremolo with the guitar in tune and the strings stretched in. And there we are, guys, all done. And I know the light's not brilliant, I've just turned the LED down a little bit because my face is so bright on this. But here we are, all done. It is a Squire made in Japan um, Telecaster, oh, sorry, Stratcaster. Couple of things we've done, we've replaced the five way with an oak grooves five way, we've replaced the jack, replaced the knobs. Uh, I've done a little bit of fret leveling down this end, we've polished all of the frets, we've also recrowned the frets because there was a lot of wear there. It's in my opinion that this does need a refret, but uh, needs must. Um, also, cutting the nut slots on the nut, we did crack the nut there, unfortunately. I have filled it in with some bone dust and some super glue, so we've made a good job of that, a little bit of extra work there. Um, and the guitar is set up properly and uh, plays absolutely fine. It sounds great. I've not put the back plate on yet. Uh, that's something I'm going to do in a moment. Um, but yeah, very, very nice guitar. These Japanese ones are holding quite high regard. Um, I've set the tremolo to just floating. 
so we're perfectly horizontal with the body but the uh, metal plate there is not touching the body so just fine for forward movement we're not going to get any backward movement on there it's just how these um, six screw tremolos work but the frets are looking as nice as they can do they are divots and uh, notches in there it plays absolutely fine it will need a refret somewhere down the line uh, but it just play perfectly that was my remit was to get this guitar playing as well as I could which it is there's no fret ding in there's no buzzers anywhere it's had a couple of electrical parts replaced. We have Grigsby switch will be a great upgrade. Oh, something I did free of charge as well is I added the bridge pickup into the tone circuit on the middle tone. So this tone is normally for the middle. It's now for the middle and the bridge. This tone is for the neck and this volume is for all three. So little addition on there as well. I also have not charged for the knobs. I had them laying around in a parts drawer. Uh, but yeah, all done. So uh, been quite a fun little project this one. All ready to go. He's going to come and pick it up tomorrow and uh, I can let it go. So before I do go, remind my website, facebook.com forward slash mg17. That's facebook.com forward slash m-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. I am Victor. I am your fret friend. Until next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other. I'll see you in the next one.